Moving sheets between files in Excel is something people do all the time, but what's the best way to do it? In this video, I'll show you how to do it manually, how to do it at the click of a button using Excel VBA, and how to do it using Power Query. There's a discussion at the end. I'll tell you which one is my favorite, and there's also a link in the description to the whole one hour session for this video, which is from our members Monday community. Let's get into it. Right click on the data sheet. I will go to move or copy, right click, then move or copy. Then I would go up here to book. So Excel is asking, which workbook do you want to go to? We want to go to our destination workbook. And then we can choose in the destination workbook, where do you want to put it? Uh, so it's going to go before sheet one, right, right to the front of the workbook, but you can choose here. And then do you want to create a copy? And create a copy is, yeah, very much uh, what you would think it is. Create a copy is going to leave this sheet in this file. If you don't create a copy, then it's going to remove the sheet uh, from this file uh, altogether. So you can just click OK now. So what about recording that in VBA? I'm going to insert a button. And then let's record that code. So developer tab, record macro. I'm going to say copy, let's say copy paste tab here. Have an OK. Now we're recording. So we've got the stop icon in the bottom left here. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to try to do this using the keyboard shortcut. So shift tab takes me to this box. Alt and down arrow allows me to select destination. And then tab is going to take me down. So I'm now in this before sheet box using the arrows. That's fine before the data sheet tab and I can see create a copy. That box has been highlighted. I hit C because C is underlined and we're, um, and then we've gone through the process again. Did you see what happened? Of course, Excel put a two after data because it's the second occurrence of a sheet called data in the file. So Excel puts that two on the end so that it can distinguish between the two sheets. What have we got to remember to do now while well, the macro is still recording? So we've got to remember to come down here I'm just going to click on the stop button. You can see that the icons changed. So we should have the code now. Double click into module one here. So we're not going to need that, but we know it's normal when we record macros, it's normal to have to go in and, and do a little bit of tidying up. That's what we're doing now. I'm going to delete the generic comments that Excel gives us, gives us at the top. I'm even going to go ahead and reset the indentation. Shift tab, bring the indentation in. So this code would work but it's not a maximum efficiency yet. We certainly don't need this stuff. So we don't need to add any buttons. You know, you can see just intuitively, you can see that this code is going to add a button. So this is all the code that we need. If we run this code from the being very intentional here about which file we're in. So I'm going back to the download file. If I right click this button and assign the macro, we can see copy paste tab here. Okay, so I've assigned that macro and now I'm just going to click it. Let's see what happens. And you can see that process did happen. It's just a single line of code, but you can see we can click on it. It's going to take the file across into the other sheet. Query to query something means, simply put, means to filter data. Yeah, so I've got this data here. Show me, for example, show me all the values in the database from the North region. Show me all the values in the database, more than 30,000. Show me all the values in the database from salary band B and C. What I'm articulating there verbally is a query. It's, well, it literally is a query, isn't it? It's like a question. And that's what Power Query uh, allows us to do. So that's the query part of Power Query. So why is it called Power? I mean, I think Power means work with multiple files. So we've got Power Pivot, Power BI, Power Query. This is the main function of Power Query as I see it. It allows us to collate data from multiple files. So let's go to get data from workbook. And then we go into this interface. So it's uh, MM74 download file I want. Import. Hmm, sounds exciting, doesn't it? Import that Excel is going to do a bit of thinking. Connecting data connection. So we do have a data connection. So that comes with some downsides, as we know. Okay, then we get this navigator window. So Excel is saying, 
yeah, in the file, which rather confusingly it's displayed as a folder, but uh, in the file it's saying, which sheet do you want me to look at? So we go to the data sheet and then this might look more familiar hmm. because Excel has taken the sheet and displayed it in this little dialog box. And it's just probably just displayed a preview. Yeah, you can see the bottom, scroll to the bottom. The data in the preview has been truncated. Great word, truncated. So it's been cut down. It's been truncated due to size limits. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. And then you can see at the top, it says null here. That means there's nothing in this cell. That's because I have, as usual, I have a couple of rows at the top that I don't put any uh, data in. I'd then recommend transform data because with Power Query, it doesn't just bring the data in. It also allows us to perform some operations on the data as it comes in. We can do things like delete columns. I think we can filter out rows. We can even do some multiplicate, some simple arithmetic stuff. There's probably more, you know, I'm only really scratching the surface at the moment. If you don't want to do this, you can just go to load straight away and Excel will load it straight into your file in the same format that it is in the origin. It won't do any operations on it. I'm going to go to transform data. You can do things like delete columns here. Like I think you can literally go to a column and just and just hit delete and it will delete the column. Uh, you can filter columns as well. So this is your normal Excel filter. So I'd say have a really good play with this. You know, if you think this is for you, potentially, it would be worth having a re really good play uh, with this. But I'm just going to load everything in. I'm going to say close and load. And then what's happening? So Excel is ticking over here. You see the data's come in. Data's come into our file. So once again, you know, pros and cons. So the clear advantage I see for using Power Query to bring the data across is it's quite easy to do, you know, using that interface. I can just go to data, get data. It's quite easy to do using that interface. You know, it's a very user-friendly interface, you know. Compare that to writing the VBA code and everything we've just done there and all of the functions we looked at, we could do that in VBA. But it's clearly much easier to do that using the Power Query interface. The main downside is we do have a, a, a query or what you call a data link, a data connection that's coming out of the file now. Now that's going to slow things down. It's going to give you that annoying notification when you open up the file. It says this file has data links. You know, do you want to update them now? All of that stuff. It's also going to slow down the functioning of the file. So if we transfer the data with VBA, the data just sits there and there's no data link and it doesn't affect the operation of the file at all. If we use Power Query, then it's constantly ticking over or certainly when we bring the data in, it's, it's going to be ticking over. That can take a while. Now, if you'd like to view the whole one hour tutorial for this session, it's in our Members Monday community and in our Members Monday community taster area, you can for free view a one hour session. The link is in the video description below. I'll see you.